Well, today is an absolutely beautiful day. I think it's supposed to get up to like 63, Stuart, or 64. It's still chilly, but there is no wind. The sky is a beautiful blue, and the sun is just really cozy and warm. And it's, it's sometimes this time of year when it's easy to kind of get tricked into thinking that spring is a little bit closer at hand than it really is. So I try to always put myself um, on alert for my emotional, um, em my emotional tendency to just want to go ahead and start gardening when it's not quite time yet. So today I am just looking to see what is going on out in the garden. It's to me one of the most exciting periods of gardening and that's to see what has germinated, what has erupted, and what kind of tasks I'll be able to do first. So I've got one of these Japanese handheld hose and as you guys know I blow the leaves on top of my flower beds to serve as kind of a mulch and it's been very very dry so I've had to water and I'm doing whatever I can to keep the moisture in because it's also been very windy so Stuart if you look here by just kind of excavating what is underneath here I can see what's going on and underneath this leafy debris, I can see that there's some larkspur seedlings. And let me see, I don't see, oh, there might, I might have seen the tip of a tulip bulb. I'm gonna put this back in place. So my pansies, a lot of them are kind of winter burned. This faces south, and so that is not uncommon for that to happen but they're definitely still alive and that's one of the reasons I have been watering this area because they need that moisture. I can come in and deadhead all of these because they will put out fresh new blooms and if the temperatures kind of moderate here in the next few days then they will start blooming a little bit more a little bit more enthusiastically. I can see here up down in here and you can see that there are some of that sedum is starting to come out with some tiny little green tips can you see that Stuart tiny little green tips that's very very exciting the phlox isn't starting to put on any new growth yet but pretty soon so today is what is it the 12th today 12th or the 13th and really in about the middle of February I'm gonna start uh, a targeted fertilizing program for my pansies because I really they like these cool temperatures and that's well when they will perform their best as soon as it starts getting hot in Oklahoma which it does fairly quickly that's when they will start to flag so I can look all around here and just kind of get a glimpse oh look here of what's going on underneath all of this leafy mulch there's some more sedum autumn joy coming up and i can see some new foliage on that chocolate chip ajuga and really you guys this is not early in my zone for this kind of thing it's been it's been a difficult year in that the temperatures were really really warm and then they kind of fell off the cliff 
So we got we have gotten down to 12 or 13 degrees, which is pretty cold for an Oklahoma winter, and it stayed down there for a while after it had been just uh, really unusually warm. And I say unusually, but lately that seems to be the pattern. Um, let me look in here. Oh, you can kind of see here that this phlox is starting to green up some. Now you may ask, when will I start cleaning off all of this leafy mulch? And I, I will leave it in place for a while yet because it's definitely serving its purpose of keeping the ground a little bit um, moisture retentive than it would otherwise. The, uh, somebody had commented, well, why didn't I just remove all of these leaves and put down some pretty mulch? Well, number one, that would be extremely labor intensive. Number two, it's not using Mother Nature's mulch, which is the natural leaf litter that comes down to protect what things are growing in the understory. It would be a lot more expensive to do that. And I kind of, because I keep the leaves blown into the flower beds and off of the lawn area, and that would be the case whether or not you had a brown Bermuda lawn with real turf or faux turf. As long as it stays in the flower beds and confined to the flower beds, then I don't mind the looks of, of the leaf litter. So for me, it's, it's just a little bit more economical and a little bit, uh, just a little bit more environmentally friendly, I think. Um, what is going on over here? Oh, look here. I think I may have showed you this in an earlier walkabout. I've got all sorts of this white Minoan lace that really like the combination of our cool and warm temperatures. So I've got a huge stand of Minoan lace, which is kind of like a smaller, more refined, elegant version of Queen Anne's lace. It went to seed. And I would imagine that it has kind of spread in a number of areas around the garden. I've got, if I wanted to take a free topiary or a free evergreen, look here, I've got a holly that has volunteered itself. And I could dig that up and I could relocate it someplace if I so chose, but I think I'm just gonna leave it be for right now. Um, and there hasn't been too much winter burn on all of the Nana Nandinas and on the boxwood. Now I think I told you that I will be relocating some of the boxwood a little bit later and I'll let you in on that. Stuart, let's walk through here. My stepping stones have been obscured by all of the leaves. Um, lots. Yeah, you can just walk through. Just don't trip. If you step on the leaves in the general vicinity, then we're good to go. Now, one of the nice things about coming out here with this, this handheld hoe is that in addition to being able to kind of remove the leaf litter, I can then also tackle some of these weeds that are growing. And again, the ground is kind of moist because I just watered. And by the way, you guys, I noticed on my street this week that the temperatures, like I say, they got down to about 12 degrees. And most of the time in Oklahoma, we don't turn our in-ground irrigation systems off during the winter because we so often have to water but we should be turning them on manual and not automatic. And I noticed so many people on my street, they, they probably had just forgotten, and some of them were new owners, and their sprinkler systems went off, and in the morning then, their, the entire surface of their lawn and some areas on their drive and their porches were frozen over. And the poor postman had to kind of navigate and be very careful where he was walking because there was lots of frozen 
lots of frozen areas that he had to had to walk over. So by all means, please make sure that you put your sprinkler systems, if you're in a warmer zone like mine, that you put them on manual and not automatic because they'll go off even when they don't need to go off and when they can create treacherous conditions. Okay, so I I am so, so, so excited about my Encore Azaleas. I know I, I have told you about that. And they're already starting to put out some buds. This year, unlike last year, they should be a little bit more established. And so I think they will bloom a lot more heavily than they did when they were newly planted. And I hope that this is just this beautiful chorus of pink and white and different shades of pink and white in here. And once I do clean up all of these leaves, I think it'll be really beautiful. At that point, I'll put down some compost as mulch. Now look over here, Stuart. This is very exciting. Stuart, are you as excited as I am? Yep. <laughs> okay, look here. So last year, I added some different varieties of hellebores. I have some white uh, hellebores in the foreground that were shared with me by someone. They're of, of an unnamed variety. This one I planted last year because I wanted some that bloomed in another color besides just white. And look there. They are starting to bloom. And this one blooms early. So I think I'm going to have to come out and clip some of these to bring in as a small bouquet. Because they are blooming just beautifully. And the interesting thing about the foliage this year is, is the hellebore foliage still looks pretty good. It, it doesn't look too rattered, ratty and tattered um, as it sometimes does this time of year. Now there's more winter to come, so that may still happen. But nevertheless, it's holding its own and looks pretty good. And likewise, look at how big all of this foxglove has gotten. Some of these camellias, the Encore Azaleas, um, the, these camellias were added a little bit later. And honestly, you guys, these camellias from the Southern Living Plant Collection, I didn't even expect them to come back after that terrible, terrible freeze we had last year. But they have. And so I will give these guys a feed with some holly tone, some kind of acidic-based fertilizer, so that they will hopefully put out some bu some buds and bloom accordingly. So I'm I'm all excited about these, and I think that they will put out really rapid growth and fill this whole area that was so traumatized by the ice storm of last year and then that subsequent freeze that we had. So this area I've showed it to you before, but I wanted to give you an update. It's doing pretty well. Now what's on my list to do, and I don't think it's premature, is I'm going to go ahead pretty soon and I am going to uh, weed eat back all of my monkey grass, the liriope, because I don't want it to have new foliage erupting in the liriope that then will make it more difficult for me to cut this back later. So right now, before that new foliage erupts, I'm going to cut all of this off. And here's, here's a hint. If you guys um, are, if you've got a patch that's kind of near your neighbors or whatever, with their permission, sometimes while I've got my weed eater out, I will just ask my neighbor if they want me to go ahead and do theirs because it's easier for me to do it than it is for them. So I, I'm happy to do that. And let's see here, Stuart. There's still some, I see some poana grass that's starting to come up. And I'll kind of beat that to the punch before it gets established in here. Here's some other, I've got some, a little bit of clover that's coming up, some other weeds. And I can nip that in the bud, literally nip it in the bud before it starts taking off just kind of scrape it from the surface and just check to see what's going on. I don't see any signs of golden fever few yet, but I'll be looking. See if anything else exciting is happening. 
Someone once called me the, I was the first sign of spring because I would be out here doing this very thing. And so they said, if it must be almost spring if Linda's out there in her yard on her hands and knees. I see more little seedlings over here. I see, now moments ago, I thought I saw some little projectiles of some tiny little silla bulbs that are coming up and I've lost it now but it's under here someplace and pretty soon I will be taking off some of this leafy litter so that I can expose the beauties of the tiny daffodils and the real early bloomers the other thing that it's helpful for me to be attentive to is where there are voids and where there are voids means that that's probably where some tulips are going to start coming up and if not then it might be an area where when i get ready to transplant a lot of that foxglove i can move it to so it also so in addition to looking for what is there i'm also looking for voids and what is not there which would present a planting opportunity and then periodically, as I always do, usually after I kind of do this walkabout, I'll stand across the street and I will examine what everything looks like in totality. So Stuart is nodding his head for me to go this way. And what I can then do is affirm whether or not my decisions on some of the plants that I wanted to move, uh, if I, I still agree with that, I can see that my wreath that I put out when I took down my Christmas wreath, that wreath is, is hanging a little wonky. I need to fix it. I need to make sure that this year that I cut back that euonymus that's growing on the tree. And overall, I can just kind of see what things are recovering and what things might need a little bit of a nudge. So you can, this is a perfect example. If I stand all the way back, there's a car coming down the street. I don't want to get run over. But the other thing that it does is I think this really points out why I can use the leaves as mulch and leave them in place versus another kind of mulch because it still looks kind of orderly. Do you think, Stuart? It still looks rather orderly and well kept because I'm blowing the leaves off of the turf and into the flower beds. Okay, so let's go and take a look at what's going on on the porch. And this reminds me, you guys, you need to hold me accountable because I'm looking for a new light pole for where that lantern is, is uh, placed right now because I lost my other one in the ice storm and I got so busy that I just kind of forgot that I needed to do that. So keep me honest, remind me of things that I pledge to do because this is a true, this is a true vlog, you guys. This isn't highly choreographed, highly produced or whatever. This is real time, really what's going on. And what's really going on right here is look at this. I see some daffodils starting to come up. And this is a batch of daffodils. It's one of the few things that um, was here before I moved in. So there used to be an old white pine that was here before I planted this caddo maple. And there was a batch of daffodils that are still there. That's how long lived they are. So uh, we've just cl cleaned up all of the leaves and everything. The window box that didn't look too bad last time you saw it is looking pretty ratty now after those really, really cold temperatures. But in here, I have some miniature daffodils that are starting to come up. And look here, there is one of those hyacinths. I believe this was, I believe these were, um, I can't remember if those were pure white or an off white. Those I believe were from color blends. A lot of them this year were from Brex. The daffodils may have been from Brex. Uh, so there you go. That's what's going on up here. And it doesn't look like such a much. 
right now, but I promise you, before you know it, it's going to just explode. So let's go to the backyard now. Well, this area is the area that I normally check first in early spring because this is what I call my minor bulb garden. You guys might re recall that I used to have rickety rackety brick that kind of edged this area and I took it out to use the brick in another location. But look here, this is where all of my hyacinths and daffodils tend to come up. And these hyacinths right now are already starting to show some color. So I've got some purple. These might be Peter Stuyvesant hyacinths, I'm not sure. But you can see here I've got all sorts of hyacinths that are coming up. And these, in addition to these little miniature daffodils, these I planted after I had them inside. I, I frequently buy bulbs from Trader Joe's or places like that in the spring to have inside and enjoy them. And then after the bloom is finished, then I come and I plant them out here in this minor bulb bed. So these guys, when they start coming up this area, I typically, once they erupt from the soil, I will sprinkle some bulb food on them because they may have been exhausted last year and they might need that additional oomph. My tulips and things that are one-shot wonders for one season, I don't do that with. But these, I will probably give them a little bit of bulb food. And before you know it, this whole area will be filled with lots of tiny little bulbs. There's all sorts of cyclamen in here. And there's some larkspur. And there's both purple and yellow cyclamen. And I just let it kind of... Um, I just kind of let it do what it wants to do and let it scamper where it wants to scamper. And I just realized I said cyclamen. I meant to say columbine. Forgive me. Don't give me a thousand comments here. It was, I meant to say uh, columbine rather than cyclamen, but I've got cyclamen on the brain because I saw some of Trader Joe's that I'm thinking about going back and getting a little bit later. So there you go. So that's this whole area in here. It's one of the first things that comes into bloom. I have a uh, little Henry Sweet Spire back in there that will bloom a little bit later. And one, one thing about this area is this is all in really, really intense shade and it tends to be pretty cold this time of year. So I tend to kind of migrate and work out in these sunny areas more than I am working out in that area where it's, where it's really still cold. Now around the perimeter, oh here's some, Stuart. Around the perimeter of this hydrangea bed, I remember planting some bulbs, and those are starting to come up now. These are little daffodils, and there are some hyacinths in here also, if I'm not mistaken. And again, these are plants that I just, the bulbs that were spent that I planted in here, otherwise I would have just discarded them. And so what I will do in terms of cleaning up all of this, is I will take away a lot of the foliage. Look, there's some more there, Stuart. I will take away a lot of this foliage that's in the foreground to uncover these sweet little bulbs that are here. And I won't put this back in place because I want those beauties to shine without having to come up through all of that, that brown leafy matter. Um, there's lots of more of this poana in here. I can kind of do some of that to excavate it, get it out before it goes to seed and get so big that it's harder to root out a little bit later. Then I can come back with a secondary cleanup, pick that up and some more weeds in here. And remember, anything that's growing where you don't want it to grow is a weed. So I've got some Mazus rectans and maybe some errant columbines and things like that that I don't necessarily want growing up in these, in these other areas. And I will remove those. 
And let's see here, Stuart. You guys are, are seeing this for the first time, as am I, because I haven't been out here in a while. Um, we'll end up back here. I'm starting to replenish some gravel back in here. And this whole bed, oh look, Stuart, all sorts of allium starting to come up. And these are probably allium that have been in here for years. They're not some of the new allium that I got from Brex. These are, these are some allium bulbs that were in here um, from previous years. So hopefully the flower head size on those will be pretty, pretty large. And yes, okay, one last thing. We talk about winter burn on boxwood and how it's not good to prune them too late into the season because the new foliage that comes up will not be tempered to the cold and won't be frost hardy or cold hardy. And this is exactly what happened here, not so much because I pruned it too late as because we had such a long and warm fall that it just kept continuing to grow and this area that has turned brown is that which got nipped by the cold that came out a little bit too late in the season but never fear I'll be able once I can get out here with my pruners I will prune all of this off and it will be lush and green and that pruning will force new growth I'm thrilled about that. I have all of my tools and my pruners sharpened. So as soon as I can get out here and start restoring order, shape, and form to all of this, I will be absolutely thrilled. So there you go, guys. That is what is happening right now. Things typically unfold in the front yard sooner than they unfold in the backyard because that is south facing and it's much warmer on that exposure. And um, so most of my enthusiasm this time of year will be in the front yard. So there you go. There's your Wednesday walkabout, such as it is. What is going on and coming up now? Well, here you go. Here's your fashion epilogue for today. My sunglasses are Ray-Bans. I got these actually off of Poshmark. And there is a, a really great tip, you guys. If you're wanting to buy a name brand pair of sunglasses, typically I always look on Poshmark or eBay, someplace like that first before I would ever buy them off of their original site. And these are brand new, by the way. And typically they're like a third, sometimes to as much as a half less. Um, and so that's kind of a, a cost conscious way to get a name brand of sunglasses or really whatever. Um, my top, my fleecy cozy top is from Amazon. I love it, it's so comfortable. Uh, my shirt, my plaid shirt is from H&M. My britches, my leggings are Athleta. These were a gift from my kiddos last year for Christmas. And my boots are Hunter boots, and these are also from eBay. So same thing applies to Hunter boots as applies to my Ray-Bans. Typically, I look at on eBay or Poshmark or someplace like that first. So there you go. There is my fashion epilogue for today. <music>